Hello, my soccer universe. I have decided to make what I initially thought in one video, I need to make three videos because it gets otherwise way too long. So welcome to the second part of my reviews. And yeah, here we, I'm gonna give you now ratings or grades to all the 24 teams that we had in this tournament. Um, the way I'm gonna do it is, I'm um, you, you will get the rating very, very soon, but I just wanna explain it beforehand. Uh, as, as you know, I compiled a rating for every team from the bookmakers odds prior to the tournament, from the FIFA uh, rating prior to the tournament, from the ELO rating prior to the tournament, averaged those up and made an uh, overall kind of aggregate rating. With that one, I could then simulate the outcome of the tour tournament with a very simple model that I've done for previous tour tournaments as well. And so I can get pro probabilities like what are the chances of this team reaching a semi-final, for instance, or a final or finishing third in the group and not, qual and not qualifying. And based on this sort of distribution um, of where you could end up, I know what was expected from the teams. And what I did then is, I said, okay, and where did the teams end up? And then, based on each team's performance distribution, if you would like, I said, what are the chances that you would have performed worse than you actually did? And if those chances were high, then you actually did very, very well. And what are the chances that you uh, could do better than you actually did? Again, if this is a very high value, then you would have done actually quite, quite bad because you say that if there's an 80% 80, 80 chance that you could have done better, well, you did not do all, all the well. However, the winner, of course, has a 0% chance of doing better. That is performing pretty, pretty good. And now to make this net then in an overarching uh, index, I just took the chances of performing worse than you did and subtracted the chances that you do better, which then puts it all on a nice scale from um, minus 100 to 100. And then I converted this into a percentage from zero to a hundred um, to kind of give you uh, an overview and then assigned grades. If you had, for instance, um, uh, this percentage then between zero and 20%, you got an F. From 20% onwards to 40%, you got a D. From over 40% to 60%, you got a C and so on. B up until 80% and then every, everything above got an A. In certain cases, you could give an A plus and so on. And so I present you with my performance rankings here from 1 to 24. And I would say we start with the bottom, the three teams that have gotten an F from me. The, those are Turkey, Russia and Poland as the worst team in there. I have to say, especially Poland is a big disappointment because we thought that they actually might fight with Sweden for a second spot uh, and have, with the talent that they have in there, um, a pretty, pretty big chance. Uh, quickly, the table that I, the, the, that I have here. So we have first the team name. Then the next thing is kind of the rating that they have, which is on a scale from uh, minus three to three, roughly. But you know, uh, it's as, as you see, this is with all the European teams. Uh, they are so tight to, 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 to together that they never get to three in many ways. Then you see the result W is for you. We have won, won the tournament, F you made it to the final, semi final, blah, blah, blah. G3 is you finished third in group but didn't get to the round of 16. G4 is you finished bottom in the group. And as you can see, uh, if you finish bottom in the group, your performance of doing worse is, of course, zero, zero percent. So you're automatically being on the lower end of the grades. Next column is performance. The over is basically uh, chances of performing better than you actually did. Then next you have the index value, which is the under minus the over, and then the percentage and the grade. So Poland, I think was a big disappointment as in a way was also Russia because finishing fourth in that group was everything but expected. And Turkey definitely was one of the biggest disappointments in the tournament. Um, it's just that uh, because of, um, yeah, the way it's uh, Turkey and Russia are rather, rather close. I have to say, I will both agree that Poland overall, I mean, only one game really undid them, but finishing last in that group, we thought, I thought Poland could do better. The over biggest disappointment because everyone thought they might do well is probably Turkey. 
then the gr uh, the D grades, and that's ac actually quite a broad uh, spectrum. I feel a little bit uh, it's hard on Scotland, North Macedonia. They were about to finish fourth, and this is where kind of the rating, um, yeah. They were awesome favorites to finish fourth, so that's why they didn't go in the F range. But um, yeah, D, I think North Macedon was already happy that they're there. So for that reason, one could already have given them a C and actually they did well. Scotland uh, even got a point of the finalists, England. So uh, that is a little bit tough, but I have to say um, the others I can, yeah, and even Hungary, uh, which, you know, they got a point of France, but still. It's fourth place and they are ahead of France the Netherl and the Netherlands. Those two teams, France is probably from the big favorites, the biggest disappointment. I mean, you have a, only a 10% chance to do worse, about a 53% chance to go better. I mean, that is against your own expectations. This is horrendous. The Netherlands, given the path there, that they were on similarly. And Portugal, slightly better they were in the group of death it was always a little bit dangerous how you would go and how which third place teams will qualify and suddenly you are with belgium so i can understand that uh germany wasn't not as much was expected from germany and you can see this also from the ratings um so they're the first group uh the a team that gets a c slightly better than port portugal because uh yes they had home field advantage but you know Portugal probably had a good chance, even as a third place, of making a deep run. Not the way it ended up, but if it would have uh, gotten with the group slightly differently, I mean, Portugal could have well end, ended up in the branch where we found then England in. Uh, so, yes, Wales kind of so and so. Uh, I think here we're entering slowly the range of the teams that did about as much as you could, could, could expect croatia uh, also in there slightly both wales and croatia maybe with a little bit of luck could have done a little bit better and i think sweden is about as much as we could expect um as is austria and is belgium austria is the perfect middle point i mean you landed right where you would expect there was not much that equal chance of doing worse and equal chance of doing better. And I think if I summarize Austria's tournament, first two games disappointing, last two games rather good, right down the middle. I think it's uh, fine. For Belgium, uh, they reached the quarterfinal, but still find them only with a C. And I actually think I would agree with that because we all expected Belgium to do a whole lot better and go a whole lot further. Uh, as you see, there's a 41% chance to do better, 37% uh, percent chance. Uh, to 41 to do worse, 37 percent to do better. So you left a l quite some on the table there. Um, there was a wide range of opportunities, and of course, the further you go, the more this probability of performing worse gets. But the 37 percent of going semi final, final, and win it that's a substantial one. Slovakia did not qualify but has a better performance than Belgium, yes. We all expect Slovakia to fail miserably. They have a horrible rating. They, with a little bit of luck and not uh, conceding so many goals to Spain, could have made to the next round. Finland totally outdid themselves. No one expected anything but fourth place from them. So that's why they got moved that high up there. Then we have Switzerland um, doing well. I mean, we're already in the B range. I mean, Finland getting a B. Uh, and then so I think the next ones are a good step above. Switzerland, Spain and Ukraine uh, slightly outdid the performances. This Spain team was kind of a box of chocolates. Either we got the boring uh, Spain team that cannot score or we got the free-flowing uh, Spain team that can either space spectacularly like against Italy or score uh, seemingly at free will. Um, the Switzerland and Ukraine, no one expected them in the quarterfinal. Absolutely no one. And so uh, that's why they have high performances. And then we get to the four best teams and those get all an A. The Czech Republic, uh, yes, they finished third in the group, but they beat the Netherlands and made it into a quarterfinal, which was way above the expectations for them. Way above the expectations. Uh, and that's why they moved up 81% uh, uh, performance uh, rating. I have to say, the Czechs were not only did the score with Schick the best goal of the tournament, Schick scoring five goals, 
they played well against the Netherlands, uh, so they were opportunistic. Maybe the one downer is that they only finished third in the group, but you you know, with four points level with Croatia and only by a goal. So I think it worked out well for them. And I have to say the last three are probably the teams of the tournaments. Denmark, after this horrible start with the Ericsson disaster, lose Lou, losing to Finland, having a little bit like the way that group went, um, but carried by all the sympathy first from their own fans, then from everywhere else, going through all the tournament and then going into overtime into a semi-final. This Denmark team, I had already high hopes ahead of this tournament for them. Um, but that they did do, will do that well, I did not expect. And then England. Yes, uh, we can definitely discuss tactics. Was it well to play so defensively and cautious? I think for the early stages of the tournament, this was the right approach because uh, we saw at the beginning of the tournament the statistics that England had the most overplayed squad. Um, so I think that was all right. However, you would have expected, especially already against Denmark, but then, but especially in the final, for a little bit more proactive approach. And that is why Italy is top. They win the tournament because they were the most, the best team and the most proactive team. Uh, they were most of the time a joy to watch. Yes, they were a little bit lucky against Spain. Uh, I will not deny that. Um, but I think in all the other games that they played, they were the better team. And they were overall the team that I loved to watch most. Has not always been with Italy, despite being an Italy fan. Uh, and winning it, you outdid yourselves. I mean, yes, you had a 10% chance. I think they were number four or five ahead of the tournament, something like that. Um, but I think they outdid themselves very, very much so. Do you agree with my uh, grades that are all empirically, all based on simulations? Uh, as I said, some, some grades are tougher than others. As I said, North Macedonia and Scotland come definitely to mind. Um, so, you know, I could have added a little bit of a subjective perspective, but these are objectively what came out. And I think it hits kind of the point. I again want to point out Belgium really really low finland really really high because they those two against the expectations performed rather so and so or really really excellent and then yeah i think the top four i would sign any time there in any case uh let me know your rating give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i'll see you with the best moments of euro 2020 bye Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.